Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at plate tectonics, and um, actually, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's just plate tectonics. So if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at when we're looking at plate tectonics, this is kind of just a snapshot of all the major plates, but if we're looking at plate tectonics, the Earth is split into about 15 major slash minor plates. Okay, there are smaller ones, and some of these are actually, you know, broken up into even smaller pieces, but these are the big ones. Do you need to memorize them or anything? No, of course not. But you do have to be able to maybe utilize something like this if it was given to you in picture form to understand what's going on with these plates. Now, remember, we have our layers of the Earth, but these plates float on a very dense liquid rock, which we call the mantle, and sometimes it's called the sthenosphere. Um, and so these things can move because they're floating on a liquid. It just so happens to be a really dense liquid. Okay, it's like, you know, maple syrupy molasses kind of, um, but still it's on a liquid. So that means that it is floating. Okay. And so that's what kind of you can think of as, Hey, when, when you hear about plates shifting and moving, part of the reason is because it's on this dense liquid rock. Now, why do these plates move? So convection, remember at the very beginning of this unit, we talked about the different types of heat transfer. And so convection is what happens in a liquid, right? And so the convection currents happen inside of the mantle. And remember, convection is just any movement of heat in a fluid where hot liquid will rise and cool liquid will fall. So you can kind of see that here. So the warmer areas are going to be the uh, whiter and lighter portions. The cooler areas are going to be kind of the redder or orangey portions. So this is the mantle. And then you can see the crust is this kind of red circle going along the outside. And so here, this would be like the core or something, okay? You can see that the heat, um, the convection currents are moving. You can see the heat is rising. And then when it hits the top, it starts to fall back down. And it just kind of cycles through. So you get this kind of motion of circling. And that is happening under the surface of the Earth's crust all of the time. Now, why does convection work this way in the Earth, right? Think about it this way. The core is still really hot, even though the Earth is, you know, 4.5 billion years old, it doesn't matter. The, the heat from that original uh, creation of the Earth um, in our solar system, like when the solar system was made, that heat is still there in the core, and it's slowly getting cooler but that heat is still warm enough to cause these convection currents. And the crust, remember, is cold by comparison. So the cold from the crust and the heat from the core is what causes this swirling liquid motion underneath the surface of our feet. Now, like it says, because of this kind of movement, the plates that have been kind of, you know, on the surface of the earth that have been uh, cracked, let's say, almost like little eggshell pieces, they're constantly colliding, separating, and melting because you have this constant movement underneath their surface, okay? Now, let's take a look. There are three major types of plate boundaries, and plate boundaries are just places where the plates connect to one another, where these cracks are, these these uh, the locations of these cracks. So the first are called the divergent plate boundaries. So divergent plates separate from one another. And so you can see you have your asthenosphere here. You have one plate going here, and you have one plate going that direction. So that would be a divergent plate boundary. So some real examples, Iceland and the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger. The plate that is running right down the plate, the plate boundary that's running right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is spreading apart. Also, Iceland is being torn apart, but it's gaining land as it breaks apart. So you can see these, um, these trenches. This is the Atlantic Ocean's trench, and it is right where that plate boundary is. And so the distance between you know New York and uh, let's say London is increasing in size every single year. In case you're wondering, that right there, that is Iceland. And it looks like it just kind of ends here, but it doesn't. You can see it continues. And so as it goes through Iceland, it's actually you know breaking apart Iceland and technically making it larger as a result of that. So you can see here's like a, an image of what that looks like. All right, convergent boundaries. So convergent boundaries are where plates collide. And so when there are convergent plate boundaries, you have one winner and one loser. One plate is going to, you know, actually win, and the other is going to start to sink underneath that winner, 
and it's going to start to melt. And that process of it sinking and melting is called subduction. So some real examples, the Himalayan mountains and the Andean mountains, right? So you can see right here, you've got a plate boundary uh, right here. This plate is the winner. This plate is the loser. This plate is folding underneath, and it is getting melted by the asthenosphere. So right here, you've got Mount Everest, and you can see this kind of like uh, the continent or subcontinent, I guess, um, of India when it crashed into this um, this giant landmass in Asia. You can see it created this kind of like uh, raised ridge of the Himalayan mountains, and they're getting taller all the time because this is still moving and getting pushed and squished, and so they're still kind of getting squished like this to this day. Here are the Andean Mountains. You can see all of the volcanoes that have popped up, and that's because of this melting. Uh, that melted rock has to go somewhere, and so sometimes it kind of bursts out in the form of these volcanoes. Now, the difference is, you don't need to know this, but the difference is that this is a continental oceanic kind of uh, interaction. You don't get any volcanoes here because these are two continental plates that kind of just collided together. All right, then transform boundaries, those are plates that slide horizontally or laterally, so they're going side to side. And so, big ones, we have the San Andreas Fault in California, obviously, and the Dead Sea. So because we're familiar with the San Andreas Fault, since we live in California, uh, here's the Dead Seas one. So you can kind of see uh, that the African plate and the Arabian plate here, you have all these little tiny um, miniature fault lines, and they're actually going side by side. This one's going this direction, this one's going that direction. So, which type of plate boundary do you think this thing is? You can see, right? This went down, this went up, so that would be a transform boundary. This one here, beautiful mountains, so that would be convergent. And then this one here, we have a nice rift valley. I think it's in Africa. That would be divergent, right? So if you have any questions, let me know.